Seit einigen Jahren gibt es eine Gruppe von Forschern, die anhand der sehr komplizierten Antriebsmotorchen winziger Bakterien Darwins Evolutionstheorie zu widerlegen versuchen. Sie sprechen von nicht reduzierbarer Komplexität. Ein nicht reduzierbar komplexes System besteht aus einer Reihe verschiedener Teile, die alle miteinander eine bestimmte Funktion erzeugen, die sie alleine nicht bilden können. Sobald man nur ein Teil entfernt, funktioniert das System nicht mehr. Ein gutes Beispiel zur Illustration ist eine Mausefalle. Eine Mausefalle besteht aus verschiedenen Teilen, einer Feder, einem Bügel, einem Grundbrett und so weiter. Wenn man nun die Feder oder den Schlagbügel entfernt, hört die Falle auf zu funktionieren und man kann keine Mäuse mehr fangen. Es ist nur sehr schwer erklärbar, wie so ein nicht reduzierbar komplexes System in winzigen Schritten entstanden sein soll, so wie der von Darwin beschriebene Prozess es erfordert. Seine Evolutionskritik fasst Behe in dem Bestseller Darwins Black Box zusammen. Darin formuliert der Wissenschaftler seine persönliche Lösung. Sie heißt Intelligent Design. Um, so what, what is this argument about? Here, here's the argument in very simplified form. Um, if you have a complex, multi-part biochemical machine composed of many parts, its function, everyone agrees, can be favored by natural selection. But the argument is that evolution can't produce them because the individual parts have no function of their own. That's what irreducible complexity means. So natural selection can't make this, doesn't have any function. Can't make that, can't make that. Um, therefore, you can't evolve a structure like this. Now, how does evolution explain something like that? Well, ever since Darwin, we've had a very good explanation. Um, and that is these complicated machines, they don't arise from scratch. They arise from combinations of components that have different functions, functions of their own. And the components originate with functions of their own as well. Therefore, natural selection will work every step of the way. Now, that's not evidence. That's just an argument. But the beauty of this is we can now hold these two ideas up against each other. And we can say, who's right? If irreducible complexity is right, then the parts of these machines should be absolutely useless. But if evolution is right, we should be able to take these machines, look at their parts and discover, wow, they do other jobs. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take the bacterial flagellum. So if we start with the flagellum, here it is, and we say, let's take away a whole bunch of the parts. How many? Um, not one. Not five, not ten. Let's take 40 of its 50 parts away. Now watch very carefully, because I'm going to do that experiment right there. There it goes. The parts are all gone, and I have left ten parts that span the membrane. What are left behind are ten proteins in the base of the flagellum. Now, if irreducible complexity is right, this should be absolutely functionless. It should have no function. But if you'll pardon the double negative, what is left behind is not non-functional. What is left behind is the type 3 secretory system, and it is fully functional. I know most of you in the room are going, of course, the type 3 secretory system. <laughs> the type 3 secretory system is a molecular syringe in which some of the nastiest protein, uh, 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 bacteria on this planet produce toxic proteins, grab onto one of our cells, and inject those proteins into our cells. The bacterium that causes bubonic plague works this way. It's really nasty stuff. Well, guess what? The 10 proteins that make up the type 3 secretory system are directly homologous to the 10 proteins in the base of the bacterial flagellum. They don't produce movement. They're not a flagellum. But are they functional? They are fully functional. That is the heart and soul of the intelligent design argument. And in this case, it turns out to be wrong. Now, it's even wronger than that. Because it turns out that not only do these proteins make up the type 3 secretory apparatus, but almost every protein in the bacterial flagellum is strongly homologous to proteins that have other functions elsewhere in the cell. And what that means is when we look at this wonderful icon of intelligent design, a careful analysis of the flagellum actually matches evolutionary theory, namely the parts should have functions of their own and not the intelligent design prediction.
and that's simply a fact. 